PN junction diode. How a PN junction is formed? Take this is a P-type semiconductor, take this an N-type semiconductor, join these two, in between PN junction is not formed. It is not going to form like that. Take a P-type semiconductor and N-type semiconductor, if you join like this, in between center when PN junction is not formed like that. How a PN junction is formed then? Take a silicon or germanium. Take a silicon or germanium. Add one side P-type impurities, add N-type impurities other side. Then a P-N junction will be, P-N junction will be created at the center. Take a silicon or germanium. One side add P-type impurities, other side add N-type impurities. Then a P-N junction is formed. Now we are going to see how a P-N junction looks like. Take a silicon or germanium. That's your wish. Add P-type impurities, that's nothing but boron, aluminium, gallium, indium, most preferable one is boron. Other side add N-type impurities, phosphorus, arsenic, example phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, bismuth, most preferable one is phosphorus. Then comes, it's an imaginary surface that's not existed, I have taken it's exist, it's not existed, taken as a reference. Here added P-type impurities, that is, in P-type impurities, majority charge carriers are holes. Minority charge carriers are electrons. These are holes. These are electrons. Holes, electrons. In n-type semiconductor, electrons are majority charge carriers. electrons and minority charge carriers are holes. So these are electrons, these are holes. Now comes, it's not completed PN junction structure. In P-type semiconductor ions will be there. Positive ions are negative ions, they accepted one electron acceptor ion okay that is it contains a negative charge each hole is associated with a negative ion each hole is associated with a negative ion each electron is associated with a positive ion so that it becomes electrically neutral. Like this. This is the structure of a PN junction with including the holes, electrons, ions. Now once take a silicon, add n-type impurities one side, p-type impurities other side, this is the formation of the ions and holes and electrons. Immediately what is going to happen? This side, left hand side, this side we are having more number of holes. This side we are having less number of holes. Okay. So, automatically holes will move from high concentration area to low concentration area till equilibrium is reached. Equilibrium means either side equal number of holes. So, once again holes will move from high concentration area to low concentration area till equilibrium is reached. Similarly, here more number of electrons are there, here less number of electrons are there. Therefore, electrons will move from this side to this side until equilibrium is 
reached. That means equal concentration is reached. Why they will move from one side of the junction to other side? Because of the diffusion mechanism. Diffusion mechanism. What is meant by diffusion? Moment of charge carries from high concentration area to low concentration area till equilibrium is reached is called diffusion and the current due to this mechanism is called diffusion current. So diffusion has to exist means one side will require more concentration, other side will require less concentration. That's here more concentration of holes, here less concentration of holes, here more concentration of electrons, here less concentration of electrons. Therefore, there is a movement of charge carriers. Therefore, this hole will move in this one, this electron will move in this direction. Therefore, electron is having negative charge, hole is having positive charge and they are coming here. What is going to happen? They will attract with each other. They will recombination takes place. Once recombination takes place means this two here is going to disappear. Similarly, this hole will recombine with this electron disappear. This electron and hole will recombine and disappear. Okay. Similarly, this hole comes here, this electron comes here because of diffusion mechanism, both will attract with each other, they will be combined and they will disappear. Like this, they will disappear. Next one, this will combine with this one, this one combine with this one, this one will combine with this one. Now, this negative ion combines with this positive ion is, and they will disappear? No. They will not combine, the ion, this ion will not move from here to here, this ion will not move from here to here. You can ask, this ion is having negative charge, this hole is having positive charge, they will attract with each other, they will recombine, they, they will disappear. No. Because ions are immobile in nature. Electrons and holes are mobile. Mobile in the sense they can move. Ions are immobile. They will not move. So they will not, there is no recombination. Wherever is there, there will be in that position only ions. Clear? So ions will be here only. Next what is going to happen? This electron comes in this way. This so, okay. This electron see comes here, but is here having negative charge or not? This area. What this area is now doing? This negative charge is so strong enough that it will repel the electron which is coming. So it comes here, but it will be repelled. Therefore, it goes back to this position. So they will. It is not crossing the junction. Similarly, this electron comes here, but this negative charge, electron, this negative charge is repelling the electron. Electron is also having negative charge, repelling. Similarly, hole will move from here to here, positive charge. But now here, there is a sufficient positive charge existed now, such that this positive charge will repel the, this positive charge. Therefore, this hole will not cross the junction. That means after certain time, no flow of charge carries from one side of the junction to other side because of your negative charge developed, your positive charge developed. It is so strong enough that there is no further movement of the charge carriers from here to here. That means holes will not able to move from here to here. Electrons cannot move from here to here. Therefore, therefore this is acting as from here to here. This is acting as barrier. Barrier in the sense it is not allowing the charge carriers from one side of the junction to other side. Okay. This is called barrier. Okay. Or it is also called as depletion layer. Depletion layer. Yeah. What is meaning of depletion layer? Previously here holes are there, here electrons are there. Now they are used. Depleted means used. Previously whatever the electrons are also available in this region are used up 
therefore it is called depletion region or depletion layer. It is also called as space charge region. It is also called space charge region. The width of this space charge region is around 0.5 micron. 0.5 micron. So, first initially for short duration of time, there is a movement of charge carriers from one side of the junction to other side. After that, the potential is developed. This potential barrier is acting as a or it is not allowing the holes from P to N, electrons from N to P, thereby obstructing the charge carriers. So, current is not going to exist. Now comes, okay, this is under unbiased. Unbiased means we are not applied any external field. If you apply forward bias, what is going to happen? See. Forward bias means P side is connected at higher potential than the N side. Okay, this is called forward bias. Now what is going to happen? Externally some field we are applying. External we are applying some field. Here it's positive charge. Here these holes are having positive charge. As this voltage goes on increasing, external field goes on increasing, these holes will acquire the energy. From where they are acquiring the energy? from the external field. See, energy means holes are having positive charge, this is positive charge, repelling with each other. As the E value increasing, electric field value increasing, more amount of repulsion force is experienced by these holes. More amount of repulsion force means these electron holes will acquire the now sufficient energy to overcome the barrier because we are giving energy. So, this hole will cross the junction. Similarly, this electron will cross the junction. Now, they are crossing the junction means we are giving some energy, therefore they are crossing the junction. That is indirectly the width of the depletion layer is previously this much means, now it is decreasing. Once it is decreasing only they are moving the, they are crossing the junction. So, as further further increasing, more number of charge carriers are crossing the junction that is indicating width is reducing. After certain point of time, majority number of charge carriers can cross the junction. Therefore, approximately the width of the depletion layer nearly becomes zero. Therefore, they can move freely from one side of the junction to other side resulting a current, majority current. Therefore, in the far by us, in the far away as the characteristics are V versus I, Vf versus If. If you plot it, Vf versus If, initially the number of charge carriers crossing the junction are very, very small. Therefore, current is very small. As the external field goes on increasing, external electric field or voltage goes on increasing, more number of charge carriers are crossing the junction by getting the energy. Therefore, current increases. After a certain point of time, the width of the depletion layer becomes narrow. Therefore, the charge carriers can freely move from one side of the junction to other side. Therefore, current increases exponentially after certain time. Initially, it is zero. After certain time, it is going to exist. <coughs> there, up to certain point of time, that is up to V gamma, current is very, very small. After that, it is going to increase exponentially. That is, up to existence of the depletion layer, current is slightly very, very small. And as the external field goes on increasing, the width of the depletion layer goes on decreasing. At certain point of time, it becomes zero. Therefore, current increases rapidly. This is called cut in voltage or offset voltage or threshold voltage, cut in voltage, offset voltage, 
threshold voltage and its value is 0.6 electron volt 0.6 volts 0.6 volts for silicon 0.2 volts for germanium 0.6 we gamma cutting voltage for silicon is 0.6 volts for germanium it is 0.2 this is under forward bias condition now comes reverse bias that is p side is connected to lower potential m side is connected to higher potential then what is going to happen Now what is going to happen? Here it is negative charge, holes are having positive charge. So holes are attracted in this direction. So they are moving in this direction. That means the holes are moving in this direction. Electrons are moving in this direction. So they are moving away from the junction. They are moving away from the junction means this hole comes in, this hole comes, this hole comes. Therefore, what is happening to width of the depletion layer? Previously, till this point is the width of the depletion layer. Now, it is increased to till this one. Now, it is increased to this one. So, previously this one, this, this much is increased. So, depletion layer is in this much. Now, further increase it. These holes also moves, therefore the width of the depletion layer increases. Now it becomes like this. So as the reverse voltage goes on increasing, the width of the depletion layer increases. Width of the depletion layer increases means holes will not move from here to here. Electrons are not moving, will not able to move from here to here. Therefore current is zero. But, but at the same time see here, there are some electrons are there here or not, minority charge carriers. You are giving energy. That means some repulsion force will be experienced by these electrons. So these electrons will cross the junction. Similarly, here hole, here hole. Okay, what is this becomes? We are giving a positive charge. Holes will repel. Repelled means they will cross the junction. Holes will cross the junction. So under reverse bias condition, there is no movement of holes from P to N. But electrons can move from P to N. Electrons here in P type semiconductor, electrons are minority charge carriers or not. So number of electrons are small number or not. Therefore current is also very small under reverse bias condition. Under reverse bias condition, current is very very small. That is given by like this. This is called VR reverse voltage. This is called IR and it is very very small. Clear? So, in the far, if you apply forward bias, holes will move from here to here, electrons will move from here to here, holes and electrons are majority charge carrier, therefore current is very large. Initially there is a barrier will be there, therefore current initially small, once barrier becomes nearer to zero, more number of charge carriers crossing the junction, resulting a large current, exponentially it is going to increase. That is in the forward bias. So in the forward bias current is maximum and current is due to majority charge carriers or minority charge carriers. Holes are moving from here to here, electrons are moving from here to here. In electrons, in n-type semiconductor majority charge carriers. Holes in plate of semiconductor are majority charge carriers. Therefore, current is due to majority charge carriers. In reverse bias condition, electrons are moving from here to here. Electrons in plate of semiconductor are minority charge carriers. Therefore, current is due to minority charge carriers. Minority charge carriers are small in number. Therefore, current is small. And this current is called, this quantity is called I naught. I naught is called reverse saturation current. I naught is called reverse saturation current. I.
this I naught is called reverse saturation current. And it is order of micro amperes for germanium, nano amperes for silicon. Reverse saturation current is order of micro, micro amperes for germanium and nano amperes for silicon. And this reverse saturation current is unwanted current. We don't want in the reverse bias condition current. It has to be zero. But small current existed. This is also called as leakage current. Leakage current. Clear? This is called diode characteristics. In the forward bias condition, current is maximum. So forward bias condition, current is Forward bias condition, current is maximum. Current is maximum means resistance is opposite, minimum. And current is due to, current is due to majority charge carriers. Majority charge carriers. Current is due to majority charge carriers. And there is the existence of V gamma under forward bias condition. Coming to reverse bias condition. Coming to reverse bias condition. Current is minimum. Resistance is Resistance is maximum. Current is due to current is due to minority charge carriers. Minority charge carriers. And there exists a reverse saturation current. I naught. It's order of micro amperes for germanium, order of nano amperes for silicon. It must be as minimum as possible. Exactly speaking, it should be zero. It required is zero. Now comes what are the applications of diode? First application. I gave an initial I gave rectifiers, clippers, clampers. Other than that one, where we are using diode from this data. Forward bias condition current is maximum, reverse bias condition current is minimum. Therefore, it acts as a switch. Diode can be used as a or PN junction can be used as a switch. What is the meaning of switch? In one direction current has to be maximum, in another direction, opposite direction, current has to be zero. Okay? The satisfied or not, current is minimum in this case. It's not an ideal switch. Okay? Current is maximum. Current is minimum. So as it is under forward bias condition, under forward bias condition, diode or PN junction acts as a on switch, O and on, that is current is maximum on. Current is zero in when the diode is reverse bias, it acts as a off switch. So one of the application of diode, simple application is switch. Clear? Now, diode is a linear device or non-linear device from the character 6. When we can say it's a linear or when we can say it's a non-linear device? If V is proportional to IE, if V is proportional to IE, that is it follows the Ohm's law, then it is said to be a linear device. Linear device means the VI characteristics should be V versus IE. If you plot it, it has to be straight line like this. 
v is proportional to y but is the characteristics are like that no therefore the diode is a non linear device diode is a non linear device but but we can assume from here to here if you take it it's looking like nearer to straight line or not similarly if you take it to here it's nearer to straight line or not there if you take piece wise a small portion in the a small piece in the characteristics it's a linear therefore the diode is called piece wise linear the diode is a piece wise linear device exactly non linear but it can be assumed as a piece wise linear piece wise linear means take a small portion take a small portion take a for small portion it acts as a it's is a linear device therefore it is pieces wise linear device piece wise linear clear the next thing at high currents diode behaves as a resistor at a very high currents diode behaves as a resistor now comes another one characteristics only now pn junction is that's diode is also called it's represented by like this anode and cathode this arrow mark this arrow mark indicates conventional current direction when the diode is far away see the arrow mark like this this arrow mark indicates current direction when the diode is forward biased so in unknown circuits how to identify the current direction is see the arrow mark that indicates current direction when the diode is forward biased take ideal diode if diode is ideal under forward bias condition under forward bias condition it is replaced by current is maximum infinity ideally so it is replaced by short circuit under reverse bias condition ideal it has to be replaced by open circuit why i am giving means in the next rectifier clippers clampers we are going to use this terminology most commonly so the va characteristics are like this v if vf ir vr forward bias short circuit current is maximum short circuit means voltage is zero so at zero volt current is maximum this characteristics are like this so under reverse bias condition open circuit current is zero so these are vi characteristics the under diode is replaced by short circuit under forward bias condition anode cathode anode cathode under diode under forward bias and diode under reverse bias if it is an ideal diode then simplified model another model is there simplified model this can be assumed as like this vf if ir vr under forward bias condition simply it is represented as like this it's denoted as v gamma that is under forward bias condition it is assumed as a voltage source with v gamma this is under forward bias condition simplified model if reverse bias we are assuming it as a open circuit anode cathode current becomes zero this is second one it's called simplified model then third one is piece wise linear model piece wise linear model 
So the characteristics are it's Vf versus If, it's V gamma. So diode is anode carcode if you are replacing it by condition. It goes on like this. This is called ideal diode characteristics. These are called simplified model IR simplified diode characteristics. These are called piecewise linear diode characteristics. And the practical characteristics, original VI characteristics I have shown exponentially increasing. Okay. These are the ideal diode far away as short circuit, reverse bias, open circuit, like this. Under simplified model, we are considering only V gamma. Under piecewise linear, we are considering a diode resistance. And if I want, it's better replace it as like this, diode resistance. I will explain what is this RF diode resistance, like this. Clear? Next. This about the VI characteristics of a diode. VI characteristics of a diode. Now comes diode resistance. Diode exhibits two types of resistances. First one, static resistance, second one, dynamic resistance. Static resistance and dynamic resistance. Okay. This static resistance and dynamic resistance we'll see after a break. Clear?
uh, before taking the static resistance and dynamic resistance, we will carry out the questions. Okay? Shakti Prasad, what is the difference between valence electron free electron? If a valence electron leaves the valence band, then does not create a hole in valence band. I already refer, explained, once again I will explain. The difference between this electron and this electron is this forms a, it's in the covalent bond. This is not under covalent bond, it's not formed any covalent bond. By giving this energy, a small amount of energy, this electron becomes free electron, hole will not be created. Okay? Whereas, if you give sufficient energy to break this covalent bond, this becomes free electron, here hole will be created. Clear? So, un if covalent bond is not formed, that electron becomes a free electron, no hole. If covalent bond is broken, electron hole pair is generated. Clear? Next, Prabhakaran. Sir, in entrance extensive semiconductor, when electron is removed from valence band to conduction band, why hole is not generated? Once electron is removed from atom, it attains positive charge and an absence of electron from phosphorus creates a hole. But you told that hole will not be generated. Why? Now once again I am repeating, this is phosphor, boron, sorry, I will, sorry, in extensive semiconductor when electron is removed from a valence band, removed electron from a valence band to conduction band, why hole is not generated? Once an electron is removed from an atom, it attains a positive charge and in absence of electron from phosphorus, creates an hole. But you told that the hole will not be generated. Why? So it is a little bit complicated. I can't understand Prabhakaran. Please, little bit clarity wise, please uh, once again pose the question. I will repeat that as of my understanding of your question. If an electron moves from the valence band to conduction band, hole will be generated in the valence band. That electron will be, free electrons will be here. So free electrons, all free electrons will be in the conduction band, holes will be in the valence band. If you break a covalent bond, then electron hole pair will be generated. If you are not breaking the covalent bond, if this free ele electron becomes a free electron, only free electron will be generated no hole, if there is no hole here, that is the property, clear? When you break the covalent bond, then only electron hole pair will be generated. Clear that point? Uh, please once again pose that question with a little bit clarity. It's, I can't get that question exactly. Ishan, can you explain valence band and free electron concept according to atomic model in detail? Can you explain valence and free electron, valence electron and free electron? Already explained previous question, I think it is sufficient. Clear? Free electron, if an electron, this is silicon, four electrons are there, assume, this right now it is called free electron. If you give some energy, sufficient energy to this electron, it becomes, acquires the energy, it becomes a free electron and a whole, a whole is generated. Clear? This is called free valence electron, this is called free electron. Valence electrons are not responsible for current conduction. Free electrons only responsible for current. Clear, Ishan? Himan Dubey. Sir, what is the effective mass of electron and hole and which is which one is greater? Right now I have not discussed anything about effective mass. Later session somewhere it comes, okay, mass of an electron, ma effective mass of an electron, effective mass of hole that is denoted by m suffix n, m suffix p. It comes in EDC, if you are a ECE student, it comes in ECE, clear? Effective mass and effective uh, mass of electron, effective mass of hole, that right now it is not required for us. Deepika Padukone. 
can you please tell me which textbook sh we should refer for analog circuits? I already explained the first starting question is that's one only. Go through the videos. Anyway, I'll give it's integrated electronics or electronic device and circuits by Milman Ralkias. There are two textbooks with the same other integrated electronics by Milman Ralkias, electronic device and circuits by Milman Ralkias. The basic concepts will be available in electronic device and circuits by Milman Alkas. Little bit advanced topics are available in electronic device, integrated electronics by Milman Alkas. <coughs> Pulse and digital circuits, that's non-linear wave shaping, linear wave shaping, you can go for uh, Milman, uh, Milman and Taub. Pulse and digital circuits by Milman and Taub. Operational amplifier, you can go for a textbook Rai Chaudhary or Ramakant Gwaikart. There is over an electronic device, another textbook is Sedra and Smith, okay, like this. Already I explained this, go through back once again. It's Asit. Next question. How does Arctic get com completed in case of p-type semiconductor due to presence of only seven electrons? How it will remain safe? That's already explained. Because of seven electrons, octet is not completed. There is a strong tendency that it will attract one electron from the neighboring one. So, neighboring, it is going to break the covalent bond, neighboring one, okay. Then it will attract one electron from there, okay. So, their hole will be created, electron will move from that neighboring atom to this one, okay. Go through the video, I explained at that time. It's seven only, it will attract one hole by breaking some other covalent bonds. That strong force will be there, okay. That's acid. Next one, Nisha. When electron leaves the phosphorus valence shell, why is hole not created? What is the process to add impurities to a semiconductor? First question is, why hole is not created? I already explained, if a covalent bond is bro uh, broken, then free electron hole pair is generated. Simply fifth valence electron is moved, there is no hole will be generated. Clear that point, I already explained. What is, the what is the process to add impurities to the semiconductor? That's once again, semi, it's a fabrication technology, okay. There is a epitaxis in, in if you are EC student, there is a, a subject VLSI. In EDC it comes, okay. At that time, they will explain how to add the impurity. There is a, okay. Whereas W students, I think this question is not required, okay. What, what is the process, how, what is the process to add impurities? Next, Tanus. How silicon electron, how silicon electron jump to boron? How silicon electron, there is no silicon electron, boron electron, okay. I think how an electron from silicon atom will jump to boron. Is it that question? Okay, that's once again for stability, eight valence electrons are there. But only seven valence electrons are there. So for stability, one more valence electron is required. So, to get that valence, one valence electron, there is a strong tendency to break the other covalent bonds. Okay? There is a, other covalent bonds are broken. That is strong tendency. If seven is there, means only one electron is there, what it required. It is very, very small number. One number is very easy to get it. Whereas, if it is having six means, to, it has to get two electrons. It's a little bit complicated, okay? Whereas only one electron, it's very strong force is available. That's why it can able to go, it, the strong force will attract the neighboring covalent bond uh, electron. Clear, Thanos? Next question. It's Kumar Pradeep. Is doping an exothermic or endothermic process? What is thermal equilibrium? I can't get that exothermic and endothermic. I can't, I don't know exactly what is the terminology that is exothermic and endothermic process, okay? Because I'm not a, uh, it's maybe related to somewhere it's physics, I don't know exactly. Whatever we require for that concept, that exothermic and endothermic will not comes into our picture. What is meant by thermal equilibrium? Thermal equilibrium means a state at which there is no further movement of the charge carriers. There is a stage from where either side, if you take an imaginary surface here, one side previously more number of charge carriers are there, other side we are having less number of charge carriers. There is a movement of charge carriers from high concentration area to low concentration area. After certain time, the number of charge carriers here and the number of charge carriers here becomes equal. Then there is no further movement of the charge carriers from one side of the junction to other side. That is called thermal equilibrium. That is called thermal equilibrium. Is it clear? 
Kumar. Next one, fifteenth question. It's Mahmud Rafi, fifteenth question, Mahmud Rafi. Why don't we use other member carbon family as semiconductor? Once again, it's related to its electrical properties. Its electrical properties. Semiconductor means whose conductivity has to lie between conductor and semiconductor. Other than if you go for the silicon and germanium, if you move away, their electrical properties are not same as the the silicon and germanium. And their, if it goes on, conductivity increases. Whereas if you go below, conductivity decreases. They will not act as a semiconductors. That's why I said phosphorus is better one. Arsenic, antimony, bismuth cannot generally avoid it. Why phosphorus only has to be used? Why not arsenic, antimony, bismuth? Use bismuth. Bismuth is not going to satisfy the electrical characteristics which are required for the doping. First of all, the atomic size is not matching. It's too large. The second one, it is becomes a conductor already. Okay, because of that characteristics, we are not doing the that thing. And also, I said boron, aluminium, gallium, indium. Boron is preferable, or sometimes aluminium. Gallium, indium, we are not going to use because of the size, atomic number, and because of the characteristics are not matching with uh, silicon atom. Clear? Next question. Avani, for, for what applications is silicon preferred, and where is germanium is preferred? Once again, if it is an EC student, it comes in, uh, it comes in ADC. Whereas W people, that is not required. So we'll see at that end when we require silicon, when we require germanium. Otherwise, I will clarify here itself if you want. Silicon reverse saturation current is very small, so it can able to withstand high temperature. If you want to able to withstand high temperature, other silicon is preferable. Okay. Whereas low cutting voltage. Point uh, silicon cutting voltage is 0.6 large. If you want low cutting voltage, germanium is preferred. So depending on that one. In depth, you can get it in EDC if you are an EC student. Next question, Ramesh Chaudhary. Please explain whole generation concept in P-type semiconductor. I think I'll just now, uh, previous two questions back, I explained. Clear? Sajjad, uh, if you still, if you are having any clarifications you require, just you can make a, once again pose the question, I will explain tomorrow, sir. If you want still. Go through video. Still, if you want, that works. Such a dialogue. Why electron is associated? Why electron is associated with holes, and hole is with electron. Why electron is associated? Sorry, I can't get that question. Please, such a dialogue. In depth, in clear. Can you ask me that question once again? Why electron is associated with associated with hole? Sorry, I can't get that question. Okay, Kishore. If both P and N are electrically neutral, how diffusion happens? The concept diffusion is different from neutral. When a P-type semiconductor and N-type semiconductor is said to be electrically neutral, when it is if total positive charge equals to total negative charge. What is meaning of diffusion? Movement of charge carries from high concentration area to low concentration area. Now you have taken P and N, you combined, you added. So one side you are having more number of holes, other side we are having more number of electrons. So diffusion is distilled. So here one side, P side more number of more number of holes, N side less number of holes. So therefore there is a movement of charge carried from high concentration area to low concentration. As it is in P-type semiconductor and N-type semiconductor, there is not going to move. But if you combine P and N, that is Take a semiconductor, add it one side P-type impurities, other side N-type impurities, then they will move from high concentration area to low concentration area. Okay? Ions are immobile. Ions are immobile. Only the holes and electrons. I am talking about holes and electrons. Whereas neutral concept comes ions also. Clear, Kishore? Neutral concept comes ions also included. Whereas for diffusion, only mobile charge carriers. That's all electrons and holes. Next question, Shakti Prasad. In the diagram, you showed only the positive ion and or negative ion. But in PN junction, how all majority charge carriers are, are having the same ion? In the diagram, you showed only the positive ion or negative ion. But in PN junction, how all, the, once again, 
वन साइड पी टाइप सेमी कंडक्टर अदर सैड एन टाइप सेमी कंडक्टर इन पी टाइप सेमी कंडक्टर मेजारटी चार्ज कैरियर हॉल हॉल विल बी असोसिएटेड विथ नेगेटिव आयान दट्स पी ओके कम्स टू एन टाइप सेमी कंडक्टर इन एन टाइप सेमी कंडक्टर मेजारटी चार्ज कैरियर आर एलेक्ट्रॉन्स एलेक्ट्रॉन्स आर असोसिएटेड विथ पॉजिटिव अयान ओके सो In a P and N, there are two are there. P type semiconductor and N type semiconductor, both are there. So both charge carriers will be there. If we discuss only P type semiconductor, one type of ions only will be there. Only if we take N type semiconductor, other type of ions will be there. But we are taking P and N, therefore both ions will be there. Clear? Next, Kushma Kirti. What about ions in the depletion layer during forward bias? They will not move. They are immobile. Clear? They will not do anything. The ions will be there as it is, but holes and electrons will acquire the energy to overcome the force. We are giving external energy. That means the electrons and holes are acquiring the energy to overcome the ions charge. Clear? They will be there itself. Next question, Surya. Sir, please explain the depletion layer decreases and increases in case of forward bias and reverse bias. Now comes to reverse bias. It's p-type semiconductor, n-type semiconductor. This depletion layer already is existed. Leave it. Now you are applying a reverse bias. Reverse bias means this here it is negative, here it is positive. In p-type semiconductor, majority charge carriers are holes. So this negative charge, this are having positive charge. Therefore, holes will move in this direction. Holes will move in this direction. Hole is moving in this direction means all these holes will disappear. Now the width of the depletion layer is increased. Same thing concept holes like this. Coming to forward bias. Here electrons. Now there is a dip, initially there is a depletion layer like this. I have taken this is the depletion layer. Now you are applying a forward bias. You are applying a forward bias. That means here positive charge. Here holes are having positive charge. They will ripple with each other. They will ripple with each other means they are acquiring the energy. From this force, acquiring the energy, this, let us suppose some X force, is, it is offering a resistance of X. You are giving a force which is greater than X, then they are crossing the junction. They are crossing the junction means the width of the depletion layer decreasing indirectly. Generally, they are acquiring the energy. That means we are assuming that the width of the depletion layer is decreasing. Next, Pratyusha Misra, is hole decide direction of current and current is flow, hole decide direction of current and current is flow in the circuit if hole exists there. Is hole decide the direction of current and current is flow in circuit if hole exists? Yes, if hole exists current will flow. Electrons are available, free electrons are there, current will be there, as well as holes are there, electrons will be there. How I will explain that one? <coughs> First, second, third, fourth, fifth, five electrons, one hole, electron. Now, I have taken example, electro, val, valence electrons and hole is there. So what is going to happen here? See here, this is having a negative charge, this is having a positive charge. Therefore, strong tendency that this electron and this hole is going, this hole comes in, this electron is comes in this direction. Therefore, this electron moves like this, this hole comes like this. Therefore, next it comes like this, so next it goes like this. So electron is moving in this direction, hole is moving in this direction. Therefore, hole indirectly carries the electron. Hole indirectly carries the electron. Therefore, 
current is existed. So here electron always see electron is flowing in the direction means hole is going in the opposite direction. Why means simply they are carrying the this hole will carrying the electrons. Now what is going to happen this electron comes here this hole comes here. So here hole will be generated. Next it will move here next like this electron will move in this direction hole is moving in the opposite direction. Next Prantik Datta what is the term saturation? Saturation means there is no further increase. Now there are 10 electrons are right now. Current is existed due to all the 10 electrons movement. Now that's all. There is no further increase. Saturated means there is no further increase. Now 10 electrons are there. Current existed due to that 10 electrons always. It's, uh, there is no further increase. Saturated means there is no further increases. Whatever the, all the available charge carriers initially existed, they will be uh, responsible for the current as long as they are existed. Suti Patkar, why N type semiconductor and P type semiconductor are electrically neutral? I already explained, just go through videos once again. Okay, N type semiconductor majority charge carriers are electrons, minority charge carriers are holes. Electrons are having negative charge, holes are having positive charge. That means more negative charge. But there are ions will be there, ions will be generated. In ions are having positive charge, overall it is N type semiconductor is neutral. Similarly, P type also neutral. Just go through it. If you are having any doubts, still clarify. Ask me. Which textbook, uh, next question, which textbook uh, you have to follow, I already explained. Just go through it. Next, Kishore. At high currents, how a diode behaves as a resistor? Okay. At high currents, it should be treated as on switch. Okay. Electrically short. Once again, electrically short means current has to be infinity. It's at maximum. Short circuit means current it has to go like this. Electrically short circuited means current it has to go like this. But a practical diode I have shown like this. If it is going like this, it's an ideal diode. But I have shown like this. In this case I said it acts as a resistor. Resistor means it has to follow the Ohm's law. Ohm's law means it like this. See here, uh, it's looking like a straight line or not. That's why I said at high currents, not at low currents. See till this point from here to here it's a straight line or not? Therefore it acts as a, whereas if you see here to here it's not a straight line. Therefore I said at high currents it acts as a resistor. And electrical shock means it has to be infinity. This is the ideal case. Clear? Next, if both P and N are electrically neutral, why do you know? Already uh, this question is asked once again, I explained. Just go through that one. I just previous three questions back I explained. I think just check it. Kishore, at high currents, how diode acts? Is, I think it's a repeated question. It's a repeated. Next, question number 29. Kumar, which book to prefer for semiconductor physics for anal and analog circuits? I think I think I already explained for analog circuit. For semiconductor physics, you can go for electronic device and circuits by Milman and Halkias. I am, I am following Milman and Halkias for electronic, electronic device by Milman and Halkias for physics. Next question, Ajit Yadav, why depletion layer is to reduce with increasing with increasing doping in Jina diode? Yeah, still I not came to Jina diode, still I am in PN junction diode. Whenever Jina diode comes, please explain, ask me that question at the time, once after explanation, okay? Right now I have not started Jina diode. Next, Rahul Kumar, why impurity doping concentration cannot be high and if done, what will happen? It, what is what are the disadvantages? Doping is very low. Why means I have taken here one phosphorus atom. All these are silicon atoms. Okay, all these are silicon atoms. One phosphorus. Why I have taken like this? We added phosphorus impurities less number. If you add all phosphorus, more phosphorus compared to silicon, what is going to happen? All this becomes phosphorus, then becomes silicon. Clear? So, if we go for, if it goes on like this, more number of holes will be there. Okay? If it goes on increasing the doping level, more number of holes, uh, electrons, more amount of concentration comes. That's all. Clear? You can do it. There are no disadvantage. Disadvantage means, if you add so much means all becomes phosphorus, there is very high concentration of charge carriers. That's all. Okay? So, why valence electrons not responsible for 
conduction. Uh, they are, why valence electrons mean they are under the influence of nucleus. They cannot move freely because they are attracted by the, or they are forced to bind by the nucleus force. Once they come out of the nucleus force, they are free. As long as they are in the valence shell, they are not responsible for the, they, they, they cannot move. Therefore, they are not responsible for the current conduction. Clear that point? But if there is a valence electron as well as one hole is there, then with the help of hole they can move. Without hole, valence electrons no way responsible for the current conduction because they are under the influence of nucleus force. <coughs> Next question. Sir, is there any difference between pure semiconductor and, uh, and an intrinsic semiconductor? Both are same. Pure semiconductor or intensive semiconductor, both are same. Extensive semiconductor are classified into two types, N type and P type. Whereas pure and intrinsic both are same. Next question. Sir, is valency, sir, as valency point of view, I think that question is incomplete. Mohan, Mohasin Rafi, but sir, as valency point of view, I can't get that question here, incomplete question here. Next, Shiva Naik. Is thermal energy, external electric field are same? No. External electric field is we are supplying. This is diode. This is external electric field. Clear? This is external electric field. I have not applied any field. But I increase the temperature. I increase the temperature. Then it is called thermal energy. Thermal energy means temperature is increased. External field means we are applying. This is external field. Without this one increase the temperature, then that is called thermal energy. Next one. Why N-type semiconductor and P-type semiconductor are electrical neutral? I repeated that question three times. Just to go through the previous videos. If not clear, then once again pose me. Next question. Hours. In piecewise linear model graph, why under reverse bias? linear graph under forward bias condition forward bias more electrons and holes will recombine result is more, more immobile ions the length of the depletion layer should increase if we increase the external voltage am i correct okay i'll clarify that one before first to that question in piecewise linear model why under reverse bias condition voltage and current is having linear graph yeah I think in the piecewise linear, I have taken like this and I have taken like this. That's your question now. Why I have taken like this? See, in the reverse bias condition, I have represented it as like a resistance. In the reverse bias condition, I have represented it as a like resistance. Since I have taken a reverse resistance, that's why I have taken a like this. Okay? If this resistance is very large, then you can take it as like this. Re resistance is very large means open circuit. Then current is zero. Since I assumed it as a resistor, that's why I take it like this. But otherwise, like this. So that depending on the resistance value. Next, under forward bias condition, yes, your valid question I will explain. Holes are moving from here to here, so left over are only ions. So holes are moving from here to here, left over has to be ions, then it has to be entire thing is has, has to be occupied by the uh, these ions only. The thing is holes are moving from here to here means we are supplying the holes like this. Whatever the deficient, uh, because there is a external field is there means we are supplying the holes from the external, clear, okay, this, from here it's coming, so what, how many number of holes crossing, the same number here goes on increasing, okay, like this, external field meaning is that's only, clear, that one, Kusma Kirti, how, how will the depletion layer width becomes zero if there are ions present in that region, once again I said, it is assumed as the width of the depletion layer is zero, because, here you are giving the force means more number is crossing the junction. 
more number of charge carriers are crossing the junction. More number can be crossing the junction means they have to overcome the barrier potential. They have to overcome the barrier potential. That's why the barrier is assumed as zero. It's existed. Barrier is existed. But you now your charge carriers are having sufficient energy to cross the junction. They are ready to cross the. They are able to cross the junction. How they are able to cross the junction? We gave sufficient energy. Maximum number of charge carriers are crossing the junction means assumed as zero. It's existed. But we are giving the energy such that they are crossing the junction. Clear? Next one. What is the significance of piecewise model of a diode? See, sometimes a diode can be diode is a non-linear diode. Sometimes it is some applications it can be assumed as a linear model for simplification purposes. In that case, I said it can be assumed as a piecewise linear model. Some applications are required. It can be assumed as a linear model and pieces wise. In that case, I gave. Next, Rashi Jain, sir, could you please once again explain the graph of negative region of a piecewise linear diode? Okay, I'll explain. Next question, I'll take the last question, then I'll go for the previous. In previous graph drawn piecewise linear diode, why graph is linear behavior in reverse saturation region? The same question, I will repeat it. See, first comes, once again I'll explain, forward bias, current is maximum. Current is maximum. Therefore, I can take ideal case like this or like this. This is simplified model or another one like this. Three. Comes to reverse bias. Current is minimum. And now comes forward bias. You can replace by a short circuit in the ideal case or a voltage source or a voltage source and a resistance RF. Whereas in the reverse bias, current is minimum. Ideal case, current is zero. So current is zero means ideal case, I can replace it by like this. No, current is minimum means it can be taken as resistance is maximum. There is a resistance is there. Resistance is there means I can replace it by a resistance RR. Now see here, what is the difference between this one and this one? Only resistor. Because of resistor it goes, Ohm's law follows or not? What is the resistance? V equals to I into R. Okay, voltage is proportional to current. And the proportional factor is resistance, R. Okay, same way if you are taking either ideal case, it becomes zero or uh, if you are representing it as a resistor in reverse bias then it is going to be like this and it is very 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 small value current is very small like this can take provided you represent it in the reverse bias like this forward bias see once again i am repeating short circuit good coming to this one only points on v gamma then v gamma in third case v gamma is there resistor is there from v gamma it is going like this in the reverse bias, I can represent it as open circuit. If I represent it as open circuit, it goes like this. Whereas, I, if I represent it as a resistor, it has to be like this. So, if you are taking a resistor, it has to be like this. If you are taking it like this, it has to be like this. Most of the cases, we will take it like this. Clear? Next, tomorrow's session, I will explain in mathematical. Right now, we are discussing only theoretical thing. Tomorrow's session, you can, I will explain with the mathematical thing. Then you can understand what is the difference. And also, I will explain the static resistance and dynamic resistance. Then it becomes clear for you. Clear?